Uh, I think especially maps like Post Youth, Dynasty, uh, and even I would say Crimson Court for sure, they yeah. all do kind of encourage that uh, outside the box thinking. But let's see, we've got one of the top Protoss players in Europe starting things off here for Team Liquid. It is Skillis in the blue. And his opponent in the top right, it's Bats playing with direct Protoss pieces. And he has gone for a very quick probe scout. This, well, this is super fast. Now, I wonder if the intent was to try and steal the gas or if he was trying to fake a cannon rush or what he was trying to do with this. But regardless, uh, we have this kind of being figured out here by Skillis overall. Good job. He, he prevents the gas steal. That was, that was good stuff. A plus. Yeah, getting your gas stolen is super annoying, right? Maybe he's taking it a little bit earlier now than he originally really wanted it to, but it doesn't really matter that much. He's going to be able to grab that gas geyser. Getting it stolen really does slow you down quite a bit, but ultimately, no mistake made right there. Other than that, there's really no real reason to be scouting quite this early. There is going to be a scout as well from Skillis, just to double check that everything is normal here as well on the other side of the map. And it's going to need to be a double gateway into a Cybercore here for both players. So basically the strategy we see in probably like 9 out of 10 Protoss versus Protoss games right now. Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't have max packs in it, uh, then <laughs> chances are... And it's not a ladder or, or game, a so there's no cannon rush. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, exactly, geez. Uh, it's either got to have max packs or it's got to have low ground ramp. So yeah, like a map Delta, like Site Delta, yeah. Yeah. Is there is there any other map in the pool right now? I mean, there's obviously Post Youth and Dynasty that are both <laughs> they have like basically main ramps. Like Post Youth is its own thing and then yeah. Dynasty is its own thing, but you're not going to one gate expand I think to the gold on Dynasty because that wouldn't work like at all. That'd be very risky. And post youth, you just are always gonna want to get expand. I think. Yeah, it's funny how over the years we've had so many map pools where we do have quite a few of them with a ramp leading down as well from the natural. But right now we don't seem to have all too many of them. Bit of variety there too. Ultimately, that means that the double gateway start will likely be the standard for a while here, at the very least with the current map pool. I don't really see that changing all too much. But there's of course a lot of deviations that you can make from here. Um, it looks like it's going to be an expansion here for Spats. Fair enough. There's a lot of resources saved up as well for Skillis. So we'll have to see what he decides to do here. Yeah, this is really interesting here from Skillet, or uh, from Spats. He's got, gone for a four adept opener. Ooh. Oh, wow. I think he had the rep around there, didn't he? But he, he moved. I, I, I'm not sure because it looked like the stalker couldn't be in the middle. But it looked like he did. Yeah, it looked like that was should have been a dead stalker. Oh, nice job right there from uh, Skillis with the Deeks. Uh, kind of outmaneuvering. Oh, okay. okay. Will still lose it. But he gets a lot more value, I think, than he should have been able to. Yeah. No, absolutely. Getting one stalker right there for two adepts is not bad, especially since adepts do tend to fall off the longer that a game of PvP goes on. Of course, we have seen players mess around a little bit as well with oh. that immortal Glaive to Death push, and he's actually hunting for the Stalker. Okay, well, he finds it. Luckily for him, the Shades have already been activated, though, so Skillis is going to be able to keep it alive, and the units will not go into the main base. Also, not to be underestimated. Much faster Robo facility here, by the way, for Spats, so he's going to yep. be able to uh, start teching up. Very quick. Very quick here. Uh, that makes me wonder, yeah, I was going to say, we might just see an Immortal, and we might just see him try and go for some early aggression here. Mm -hmm. That's... I mean, Spots loves his War Prisms. Ooh, nice job from Skillis right there. Waiting for where the Shade would probably go. Gets the interception. That's some, that's some top-tier play right there. Great stuff already out of Skillis. Um, I'm really curious, yeah, if this is going to be a big attack. You mentioned the Glaive to Depths. We do have a quick Twilight Council. Mm -hmm. Spots really does love getting aggressive. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the best follow-up right now. If he wants to try and win this game, but then suddenly losing a bunch of those Adepts is quite painful. So far, he's lost three of them, which really does add up, and I don't think it's going to be the last of it, as another one does fall. He really wants to slow down these Stalkers, but lovely micro here, all things considered, from Skillis. Skillis is happy to lose a Stalker or two if he can get this many of those Adepts. It's actually going to be Blink. He actually just decides to go straight blink here. Maybe the original plan was to go into Glaives, but 
And after losing those adepts, he decides, nope, we're not going to do it. That's very interesting. Uh, it, yeah, it was two stalkers for six adepts. That is an incredibly yeah. good trade for the stalker player. Uh, obviously, like you mentioned, those adepts fall off, but it doesn't mean you want to lose them for free. It's 400 no. resources more. Like, that is a significant difference. Now, Spots did go for a War Prism after the two Immortals. This makes me wonder if he's going to try and do something a little bit fancy. But Skillis is actually the one who is getting very aggressive. He's got that War Prism. He's going to be able to blink into the main base. Oh, a Force Field on the ramp would be huge. Oh, he's going to get it. He does have it. There we go. Good pickup as well. Saves a bunch of the units, although we may have to continue microing for just a little bit longer. Shutting down the pylon would be nice, but he doesn't really want to take the chance. Defensive Prism there really coming yeah. in clutch. Yeah, without that, he is locked out of his main base. Uh, and he did keep it well positioned. So even though it was, you know, a little bit uh, uncomfortable with that force field getting landed, did sh did he just kill his own battery? Yeah, he just yeah, he yeah, did. He just killed his own battery with the immortal, didn't he? I think he was on a tech move on it already, and he solved the other, uh, attacking units on the low ground, but then the Immortal, apparently stuck in the main base, decided to come and finish the job that yeah. he accidentally begun. Yeah, it shows that Spots killed uh, 225 minerals and 50 gas and only killed one stalker. So that you add the heck extra 100 minerals to that, so he Prism. killed he killed his own shield battery for sure. Oh, man, great little play right here from Skillis. He might get a little bit trapped, but he can technically still blink out. Oh, Spots will go for the chase. And 29 it's a, workers, though, at this point. It's just yeah. nothing to write home about. This basically turns into an all-in. Yeah. Spots pretty much has to win with this particular army of his, but I don't think he's got the numbers. Warps in two, three additional units. Fair enough. Disruptor already available here for Skillers, by the way. Not slowing down as far as the advancement of that goes. And that now is forcing the Protoss player in a red back, but he needs to do something here. Now, there are still oh. a lot of units, though. Yeah, suddenly those reinforcing Stalkers show up. Is this basically an all-in here? But he's got a scary army. He has a very scary army, and that was a very bad blink from Skillis. Oh, very aggressive blink coming in from Spots. He's going to take down his opponent's Immortal. He's got three Immortals to one. Takes down the Disruptor. Spots is going to maybe do it right here. Disruptor will get two Stalkers. Is that enough to hold? The probes are actually going to be very helpful against the Immortal, but some good War Prism Micro. Uh, wow. That blink, that's not enough. Skillis is going to be forced to tap. Spots. It, it all came down to that one bad blink, I think, where he, yep. where uh, Skillis tried to kill the Prism, wasn't able to get it, and Spots all of a sudden just wiped most of the army. I wonder if he overcomplicated it a little bit too, though, going straight into those Disruptors. If he just had Immortals, he obviously didn't intend to really force his opponent into that all-in there, but those Disruptors, they're nice, but they do focus a lot of your attention on, well, for example, not your Blink Stalkers, right? Mm. And, Sometimes an aggressive blink like that can uh, can cost you the game. So Spats probably did not necessarily anticipate himself winning that game there either from that position. But sometimes, well, when the opponent makes a, a blunder like that, you can come back. Yeah, and uh, the best thing you can do is when your opponent makes a mistake, like don't don't stop them. Don't, like no, like get out of their way. Like let it happen. Uh, now, obviously, <laughs> that was that was Spots. You know, like attacking when that happened, and it. it kind of forced the error but still that was uh that was unfortunate because skillis up to that point had played a an extremely clean game and you hate to have one of those games kind of go to waste hopefully hopefully he's able to refocus and get into game two and uh not let it affect his mental too much but good job from spots to yeah turn a, a very w low percentage win into uh into a dub absolutely Players are asking if we are ready to. We are indeed going to be loading onto Golden Aura here in just a moment. Spats so suddenly found himself with an opportunity, right? It's kind of amazing. Like, sometimes you can kind of feel like your, your game is over, but a lot of Stalkers actually still came across the map. When I first looked at that army that Spats actually brought, I was like, okay, that is not looking all too good. But then when the rest of those units regrouped with the main army, I mean... Yeah, he just ended up with so many units there, and that one aggressive blink was just not quite necessary. So it's actually Skillis who's currently 1-0 behind, even though he's the favorite going into this match. Yeah, and was in a good position for so much of that. Like so the first 98% of it. Yeah, <laughs> it turns pretty out much. The only, the only thing that matters is the last 2%, though. <laughs> 
I mean, that's yeah, there's something to that for sure. And uh, we'll see if this man can build on that in the bottom right. It is spots in the red. And his opponent, all the way in the opposite corner of Goldenara, we have Skillis. Yeah, I'm really... That, that's such a shame. That's such a shame for Skillis. Like, great job from Spots, but that's... That's a loss that, um... Especially when it's the very first one of the new season, can kind of linger in your head a little bit. Uh, yep. Because it really was just like one misclick where he didn't kill the prism. Uh, either A, if he doesn't commit in for that, I think he's probably fine. And B, if he actually kills the prism when he, he goes for it, I think he's fine too. But yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a rough one. That was a real rough one. Yep. Sometimes the nerfs can get into your head a little bit as well, right? Anyways, mm -hmm. now it's going to be spots who has a 1-0 advantage, and that does give him a couple opportunities. We already saw Dark Templar catching the opposing Protoss off guard earlier today as well. Mm. I would not mind seeing something along those lines here as well from Spots, and he may just be cooking like, uh, he may be cooking something like that up here, as he does go for one of those proxy pylons. Pretty uh, common strategy, of course, in this particular matchup, even if you don't go for any sort of real proxies. Skillis is certainly going to be counting the pylons around the main base here, and he will see that one of them is missing. Otherwise, the opponent would be heavily supply blocked, but it's going to be a robo facility. Okay. Yeah, Spatz is a... Uh, he is one of the OG proxy robo players. Uh, he may not be the king of it, like an Aerog Fire is, uh, but he is definitely extremely adept with that proxy robo play. He's really deadly with you know, <laughs> with a three gate robo or with just two immortals and a prism. Skillis can certainly answer him, but I do like this decision to go for this when he's up one zero. Scouts However, it. that is a great scout. Oh, and yep. an instant Stargate. Is, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna see this coming in from a mile away now and immediately fires up the Stargate at home, which is of course an excellent choice. There's a pylon over Ooh. here to provide vision that will allow those stalkers to shoot across <laughs> those rocks, which is really quite cute because killing that pylon is going to shut down the production on that robo. And honestly, that is going to be a disaster as far as this proxy goes. Now, Spat's already anticipating oh it. He's making some backup pylons here too, but this is certainly not going as smoothly as Spat's had anticipated. That was a 300 IQ play for sure because the amount of time it would have taken him to get around those rocks and how much more exposed he would have had to make those stalkers would have made it very dangerous for him. As it is, he's able to slow down the first immortal from hitting the field for a while. We do see Spots on the charge. Will be able to find one of his opponent's stalkers, but Skillis is going to turn around, kills a stalker of his opponent. Ah, and I think he, he should have killed at least one more right there if he would have shaded a little further forward, but that Adept decided to sleep on the job for just a little bit with the shade. Skillis has decided to go for a defensive Void Ray, by the way, which is exactly the reason why that Stargate is so handy against Robo Facility units, because there are no Robo units that shoot up. So at this point, Skillis is going to feel pretty comfortable as soon as that Void Ray spawns, and we're going to even make a second one on the back of this too, just assuming that the opponent here is completely all-in. And there's that Prismatic Alignment activated yeah. immediately, and the Immortal's just not fast enough. I mean, this is so good for Skillis. It was already quite good when he got the jump on this, but there's only two gates. So like, Spots yeah. can't even get a lot of units. He is just gonna go for a very risky play. And honestly, considering how kind of set back he's been, I actually do like it in concept. I don't think it's gonna work for him, but I no. think it's, it's the best move he could maybe go for, and it could catch his opponent off guard. And actually, oh, never mind, super battery. <laughs> Nicely done as well. Battery overcharge is going to save that Void Ray. The rest of the army isn't even a necessity as Skillis decides to send everything that he's got across the map. At this point, the unit count is just not quite there here for Spats. That second Void Ray, by the way, is going to be protecting home. Okay, well, now the recall here may very well prompt that second one to go across the map too. Aiming for one more, uh, one more hit. There you go. He does ultimately fire up that, uh, or, or shut down, I guess, mm. fire at that one thing. As the prism is going to take the job of the pylon for just a second, but 
Uh, nice controller by Spats, though. Really making uh, a game oh. out of a very bad situation. Yeah, and that just by forcing the units to stay at home, now getting the jump on these stalkers. Good job right there from Spatz. I still think this is really tough for him. Really, really tough for him, but being able to wipe out a good portion of the army of his opponent, uh, I mean, it's it's still so tough. Like the tech is so much worse for Spatz right now. He yep. obviously has that robotics facility, but it's unpowered. And I, I love this decision from Skillis. Like, he doesn't need to win the yes. game right here. Just expanding behind it is is going to make things... Well, it's it's going to make sure that he doesn't lose the lead that he's kind of carved out for himself. Exactly. It's very easy to get carried away with the offense, yes. right? And then we already saw a couple things not quite going his way. Yes, it could have been a win at this point, but sometimes it's time to call it quits when it comes to the aggression. Yeah. He went for a, a robo facility and a twilight council on the back of this too, so it's not like he just was making non-stop void rays there. And again, maybe he could have made non-stop void rays and he would have been able to win the game already, but why really take the chance when you already have an advantage? So now he's going to be ahead, not just as far as the tech goes, but he's also going to be ahead as far as the economy goes. And Building up that additional pillar of StarCraft is very handy. Now, Blink is going to be an opportunity, I guess, here for Spats, but blinking into somebody who's, at that time, probably going to have at least three Immortals is... What do you do? <laughs> I'm not well, sure. Yeah, it's a bad time. And uh, because Skillis was able to... He was able to uh, take his base relatively quickly, it will kick in by the time that Blink is done, basically. Like, it's already basically gonna justify itself in the next you know 30 seconds yep. so it's not even like spots has a timing where that that base just finished and it hasn't you know maybe paid off for itself with a couple extra shield batteries or uh an extra mortal or what have you like it's it's justified itself already so spots really gonna need to channel some magic here to make something happen you're absolutely right. So at this point, the longer that the game goes on, the more supply Skillis will be able to gather compared to his opponent. He just simply does not have the economy for it. Spats that is. So he needs to get something done and he needs to get it done ASAP. Now he does have the opportunity to blink into the opponent's main base. That's nice. Okay, grabs one of the stalkers there for basically free. Uh, problem here is that the army for the player in red is just not quite big enough. So there's the third immortal. There's a, a, a half dozen shield batteries set up too. You can't get in there. But you also need to get in there because the alternative is, well, you slowly bleeding out over the course of the next few minutes. Skillis doesn't really need to attack. But with him having that two base economy versus Spats' one base. And he keeps checking, by the way. There's always scouts on the other side of the map. So Skillis knows exactly what's up. He can start just fighting his army even without that static defense. That's a little risky, though. There's an aggressive link forward. Gets two Immortals right from the start. Void Ray falls. Third one? Okay. Third one of those Immortals also goes down. I mean, best case scenario, I would say, for Spats, but it's still not enough. Yeah, that's that's just a matter of Skillis knowing the game state and saying, yeah, maybe this is a little bit inefficient, but this makes sure that you don't blink into my base, catch me moving out in a weird position and then things get really weird like this is skill is saying okay yeah you kill my immortals but i also kill like a good number of stalkers he's got to be real careful because yeah. now now things get a little bit dicey like in my mind that's the only way he could lose you yes. know like if he if he throws away a bunch of those units for essentially free like yeah now he can't really be caught off guard but that was also pretty risky there is a Dark Shrine on the back of this. Obviously, there is detection available as well for Skillis. He's got that one Observer. It's currently on the other side of the map. Oh, okay, that was Spats a weird is going to continue trying, blinking about half the units in the main, but he okay, got scouted. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he got scouted in the GDs. Well, I, yeah, I think I think he missed the messed up the blink a little bit and just said, yeah, no, can't do it. Which, uh, fair enough. I, I mean, that's... That's fair. I didn't think he was going to be able to do it anyways. You are right. That was probably... That was a little bit of impatience from Skillis, I think. Yeah. Like, he had he had good numbers, right? Like, he had enough yeah. stuff there in the end. But I've seen a lot of games where you're like, okay, yeah, no, this is the way that I can force the win. And then it horribly... Like, it, it ends up being the only decision that allows your opponent to get back into it. So it's, yeah. it's sometimes a little bit scary, but either way. 
That means that Skillis manages to even up the score right here in this best of three series. And our final game here is going to be on Ghost Reaver. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, one of the one of the new maps. I mean, that's <laughs> we got a more than 50% chance of... <clears throat> got a more than 50% chance of getting a new map, but Ghost River is... It's a pretty neat map. I think it's it's a lot of a lot of reasons why we're probably going to see it frequently in like PVP especially is that there's nothing that makes you want to veto it. You know, a map mm -hmm. like Amphion, there's those minerals in the natural that make you not really want to play it because something weird could happen there and the pathing exactly. is really weird. And something like you know, obviously we already talked about post use and dynasty, they're both a little bit funky. You don't necessarily want to play those maps. And the European mantra has always been, and I'm sure you know this as well, being a member of the European ladder, and I'm once or twice dipping your toes in NA. The European mantra is much more stable and like much more solid in general without taking as many risks, I feel. So it makes sense that this is the one that we, we end up seeing. Yeah, I think for, for Protoss versus Protoss, it's also quite a predictable map, right? There's not that many scary yeah. things going on here. Um, so it makes sense to see Ghost River, but it's just exciting to me that we have been seeing these maps so far. I mean, the new balance patch, I gotta say, the new balance patch and the new maps have been working out really well, it seems like, overall. Um, yeah, good step in the right direction, exciting games. I'm sure not everybody, uh, as far as the pro gamers go in particular, are maybe enjoying the new maps quite as much, but... Um, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun as a caster and as a viewer to see all of these maps develop and Well, we talked about it already before but I was a little concerned that especially for these big tournaments They were gonna see all of the crazier maps just getting vetoed after vetoed after vetoed But apparently if you have enough of the weird maps in a nine map pool even uh, We will still see them pop up all the time and very frequently It's actually two sometimes, you know, even all three of the maps in a best of three series on the new ones, which yeah, It's very nice Yeah yeah, very much so. And with that, we are getting into the third match of this series. Spawning up at the top right for Team Liquid. It is Skillis. Nikita. In the blue. And his opponent. All the way in the top left-hand corner of the map. This is Spatz. How German do we have to get to with the uh, pronunciation? Spatz. <laughs> Spatz. Spatz. I feel like you were, I thought you were going to go in like the direction of just like very like intense, like Spatz. <laughs> uh, apparently before he used to go under the idea of, of still Spatz, but that was S-P-A-Z. Yes. So he apparently added a T in his nickname. I was going to say, I feel like something has changed ever so slightly. It's technically the same pronunciation, but I can imagine in the past, before he added the T, a lot of non-Germans would be pronouncing it as Spaz. Yes, that was, yeah, yeah. And he, yeah, he yeah. was- so we want to force the T in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I I like the, um, I like the concept of it just being more emphasized this way, like. Yeah. Like they're just like, yeah, no, this is how it's, this is how it's said. This is, this is what we do. This is where we go. Next up, there would be an H right next to the S, you know, to make it Spatz, to make it, to make it even more German. We S keep on adding a letter every S year. S-C-H-P-A-T-Z-Z. -Z. <laughs> Spatz! <laughs> we, we go back to, like, the early days of the internet where everybody had, like, random letters duplicated at the end of their nicknames. Or oh, just yeah. A bunch of, yeah. Those those were the days. Underscores everywhere. Uppercase Sadly, X, I don't think you can add X. this to your... Uh, yeah, I don't think you can add those to your StarCraft username, can you? I don't think you can have, like, uh, underscores, for example, or, like, a dash. You used to have many of those nicknames. I don't think the, so. The olden days. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're right about that. I think that's something that has gone the way of the Dodo. Uh, yeah. Spots, by the way, is going to be going for the... <laughs> you don't uh, have to shout it. <laughs> <laughs> Just blow out the eardrums of everyone listening. Uh, he is going to be going for the Proxy Robo once again, but this is... This is something that proxy robo enjoyers love to do, is they love to still go for the proxy, but put it like 
way out in the middle of the boonies, just way out on the middle of the map. I feel like it's not even a like you at this point you could probably have put it in a main base and the rush distance it's closer. is like nearly the same. It's I think it's actually closer from the main base. Like yes. the the warp prism because it, it would fly direct would get to the bottom of your opponent's main base quicker. But in terms of like yeah. the actual rush distance, I think that the natural ramp or like from the your own main is closer. Is definitely shorter. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. That's actually kind of crazy. Yeah, it's really funny. And Skillus is, is headed in that direction as well with one of his units oh. right now. He may just get a glimpse oh. of it. The probe is scouting. Oh my God, we got it. Excellently gotta... played right there. Skillus sees what's going on. He's going no, to- No, he didn't. Bets is here. He's... Wait, he didn't see? He didn't see it. What? How was... is, how does he? Huh? Eh? I. Oh, Nani? Okay, well, that felt like I didn't even bother selecting the probe and putting the vision up, but that should have been. Oh, that was actually so incredibly close. Well, there will still be a oh, random. Oh, he mortal sees it now. Map, though, so, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, oh a stopper just popped trapped. out. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of nice for uh, Skillus. Oh, almost gets both units. Now, the Oracle is going across the map. Is there a shield battery in the main mineral line? There's a shield battery somewhere. Right there. Uh, there is... How much energy is on the Nexus? Not enough to pop battery overcharge yet. So, Skillless goes right in and turns on the Pulsar Beam. He will burn through most of the energy before battery overcharge can be popped. He's going to get at least yeah. a couple probes regardless. There's the battery overcharge. Still going to be able to continue dealing some damage, though. This is giving Skillis quite a bit of time, I guess, but he needs to defend against these Immortals, and these Immortals are going to be really scary. Yes, that is going to be quite difficult for him. It's only one Immortal for now. Third Gate is about to complete, but with a Void Ray completed at home, high ground advantage, this looks very comfy for Skillis, and he's got his own yep. robotics facility. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the position for Skillis a lot, for sure. He also snuck in a proxy pylon right now, by the way, in the opponent's natural expansion, which is really quite nice. Just sneaking a few adepts into the main base, for example, not a bad <laughs> choice at all. That's that one is a little that, that stalker got to retire, apparently. Yeah, that stalker is actually just try like it went down to the pool, like the little the little lake on the bottom, and was just trying to figure <laughs> itself out. You know, it was just like, it's yeah, important. I just got to do some thinking. It's a fast-paced world out there, Seth Fest. Sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes you need to just sit there and think for a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. You were just on a stroll in the middle of the map and an immortal walked up and punched you in the face like six times. You yeah. almost died life flash before You'd be sitting down by the beach eyes. as well for just a moment, or yeah. at least it's a little lake area, I guess. I'm going to fight an immortal. Oh, immortal's got hands. <laughs> it's still looking for this proxy. It still hasn't found it. He's very close, but Stalkers apparently don't have the vision, as we do have a bunch of Adepts going into that main base. Okay. Oh my Crisis god. Crisis management ever spats. Oh, the Stasis Ooh. Ward actually puts in a ton of work. Yes, it does. Uh, that is... That was a lot of Adepts for Skillis. That was four Adepts that didn't even... I don't, I don't even think they killed a probe. No, that one... Uh, wait, how many probes have died? Six uh, in total. Maybe, maybe he got one probe. Yeah, but I think he got one. I think the the Oracle earlier must have gotten a couple additional ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It got a, it got a few. All uh, right. So this is the moment where Skillis is expanding behind it, though. So this is certainly going to be when Spats has to pull the trigger, right? Like, he can't just continue warping in units. He needs to get something done with it eventually. He has been making quite a few probes. He's just going to expand himself, too. Oh, He's wow. so far behind economically, though. Yeah, down nine probes is a really big problem of four spots. Uh, we do have these sentries... For both sides, force fields are going to be really critical. There are two immortals to one, but of course that war prism can be very handy, and the force fields are very good from spots to start things off. Void Ray has to kind of stay back, can't get drawn out. That was a good start <laughs> for the Stalker. Oh no! no. <laughs> oh man, the philosopher <laughs> Stalker finally came back home, but. Poor guy. I recognized him by his shields. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, the, the HP was absolutely blasted. Uh, this okay. is... This is a little bit scary right now for Skillis. Ooh, force field on the ramp. Going to come on in, but it's not perfect. And that means the units get down. Good micro there. Saving the immortal by Skillis. And now Spots is in a ton of trouble, I think. I think that was his biggest opportunity. Yep. Natural expansion at this point, of course, also done for Skillis. So he's going to uh, finally be able to make use of that oversaturation that he's had for some time. 
It's probably doing a little bit of a dance just to uh, complete the wall off here. But now it's soon going to be Skillis' opportunity to go across. Okay, he does get a good force field down. A couple units will have to pop out of that prism Oof. just to save the Immortal right there. Lovely control by Spets, but... The uh, problem is, the longer that this goes on, the economy is just going to kick in for Skillis, right? So he's... Uh, Spets that is right now, he's going into the charge research, which is nice. Oh! oh getting a prism. Okay, that's sweet. That takes up uh, robot production time, of course. And there is... Cheap. There are two observers that see everything, and Skillis does not have an observer, so he's he's been at a vision deficit this whole time, and that's been allowing Spots to confidently make some of the plays he's made. Uh, even though he wasn't able to get that force field on the ramp that would have been potentially game-winning. Ah, oh, man, I don't know. Uh, ooh, this is going to oh, be a big stasis board. Not again, not again, not again! Oh. Oh, this one's even bigger than the previous one. That's so much damage. Terrible, terrible damage. Uh, yeah. Spots does find a position in the natural. Oh, stasis. <laughs> he I, wants all of them. Wait. Well, it worked. Okay, no, no, it got a different probe. I was like, that's not supposed to reapply the stasis ward. Uh, but it, it put a, another... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got a different probe. No, no, okay, it's okay. A different, different group of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But but I, I saw like the, the bar reset, but it's because there was a probe occupying the same space. That a different oh, they probe were stacked was. On top of each other. They were stacked yeah. on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, behind this, Spots is actually just going to take a third. Oh, this is kind of cute. Uh, this might be something that Skillis is not expecting. And Spots, it's not really his MO, generally speaking. He is oftentimes a, a very two base committed player. Not usually the kind to expand in a situation like this, but he is going to pull the trigger. Skillis, though, look at the sentry count right now. Six mm -hmm. sentries right now for Skillis, and there is a lot of army power for the blue Protoss. Problem is, though, the opponent has a bunch of them, too. We have another big stasis. Ugh. Man, this game, if, if those stasis wards did not go down, the supply count would probably look quite a bit closer here. Spence yeah. does have that nice and early third base, though, and he has had all of that vision here now the night, but... Overall, he's really been making a, a very nice game out of this, I think. Like, this wasn't looking all too great for him just a few minutes ago, but he's been... Yeah, he's been making some solid progress here, all things considered. The question is, though, can he keep that third Nexus alive? Because Skillis is now going across the map. He's playing defensively for a long while. He's gonna find this third base, and he's gonna try and work on it immediately. Yeah, and no additional uh, Immortals were created from that proxied base. We do see the force fields very good here. Lucinated Archon not going to break those force fields. The one on the left will, but with Blink, with the Immortals, this is, I think, just too much for Spots to handle. The Charge Lots got on top of those Stalkers, but they just had the uh, they just had the Blink available, and they just get out of there. Battery Overcharge not really contributing enough to the fight, and Skillis looks like he is going to be able to survive this scary situation. And at the very least, he is going to kill this third Nexus. Spots... Well, I don't know if Skillis needs to let him survive. I'm pretty sure Skillis can just push into the natural and end it right now. Yeah, I think that's exactly what he will do. I mean, there are a couple Archons in the mix, but there's no good answer against this Protoss army in blue. Those Immortals have been putting in so oh, much work. Another, another stasis. stasis ward. I feel like half of the workers have not been mining in this game half of the time. GG is cold. And ultimately, it is Skillis who obtains the victory in this series. He had to fight for it, but I think ultimately he did play really well.